Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On this video, we are going to try to get our chickens in the chicken church, get them out of the greenhouse coop, get them in the chicken church before winter really sets in. We got some snow predicted, got a bunch of freezing temperatures. So we want to get them in there and uh, hopefully get them, kind of get them uh, settled for the winter. What we got to do is a couple things. We got to do the interior siding, build the nesting boxes and put a roost in. And then of course, put our uh, poultry netting up. We're gonna put poultry netting up around for now, and then this spring we'll do permanent fencing. All right, so uh, let's gather materials and get some tools out. Okay, I got all the farm animals fed and all that taken care of, so now it's time to get to work. I'm gonna take my half inch material that I milled uh, several months ago get loaded up on the side-by-side -side with some tools and get up there and start cutting. The problem is I think all of this is going to be frozen together right now. <laughs> So the first thing we want to work on is the interior siding and with the wood that I milled, the one inch material wood, or half inch material wood that I milled, just going to tack that up, butt it up against one another. Uh, I didn't do an actual lap joint like you'd have in shiplap. Um, just going to flush it up. Again, the goal is to keep the poop from getting down and around the studs and being an issue in cleaning out. Uh, it's still going to get poop covered as they projectile poop against it. But that's what we want to do, get that started. And we're going to go up to the top of the, um, or to the beginning of the rafters. So we'll just go up to that high and stop. Um, first, we got to wait for the cat to finish lunch uh, so we can get to work here. The cat has commandeered the chicken coop to be her cat house. Of course, Kelly's heated blanket doesn't help that situation much either. Okay, I've come about as far as I can on the inside siding. Got uh, two runs here underneath the nesting box. Got the back side and the other side done. But it's, uh, now I need to take the time to frame out the uh, nesting box holder. So what we're using for next nesting boxes are milk crates, just like we used in the Coupe de Ville. And those are gonna be, there's gonna be four of them, and they're gonna be two stacked up on each side. And that will be, uh, that'll be plenty, or 20 chickens is what we'll have in the uh, chicken church at most. So that'll be plenty for 
nesting boxes for those because they say you know four to five nesting boxes four to five chickens per nesting box so that should suffice you do that and they all lay in one nesting box anyway but uh, i'm going to frame out a holder to hold these and of course a little roost bar for them to jump up on and then we'll keep going on the side All right, so I got it made for the four boxes. What I realized, and I don't have to do this at the uh, Coupe de Ville, I'm gonna have to cut the backs. You see how I've cut the fronts out of the milk crate. I'm gonna have to cut the backs because it's not, you can't pull the milk crates out. So I have to reach in. A little bit of a design flaw there, but it uh, should be too big a deal. Uh, but then if yeah, she drops the door, whoever's getting the eggs drops the door, can just reach in and get them versus having to pull the carton out or the crate and the coop to take the crate out and bang some of the poop out or anything like that so i have to come inside to clean these i guess so i want to thank anchor for sponsoring this video and they asked me to talk about the anchor 521 power station so they sent me this been playing around with it for a little bit now and i've really been impressed with it so far you know it's smaller so of course it's it's you know smaller than a lunch pail those of you guys that carry lunch pails anymore uh, but this is the 521 and it's 256 watt hours of power lithium ion of course and it has the ability to charge three different ways you can charge straight from an ac plug that comes with it a dc plug that also comes with it or you can hook up to any compatible solar panel and um, actually my jackery panels work with this so pretty handy uh, the smaller version of course you're not going to run any power tools but really good for recharging I like to use it um, if I'm away from power. I can use it to recharge my cordless uh, battery packs, uh, my phone. I can run some small lights with it if I need to if I'm in the dark. It really comes in handy for that. So this model comes with two AC ports, one DC uh, you know, cigarette lighter style plug. It has two USB-A ports and one USB-C port. The neat thing about it is you can actually use all of them at the same time. You don't have to switch between them. And it also has a little, it's like a little trouble light that you can use just a, a, a small lamp. Um, actually comes in handy when it's dark and you're trying to see where the plugs are. You can turn the lamp on and voila, there you go. Obviously full display gives you your battery charge status. It also has um, a power saver mode. So if it's charging devices and it recognizes that the device is charged, then of course it stops sending power to it. So it saves battery. So it's pretty slick. I'm anxious to try this out at camp. I think that's where we're gonna use it the most. And of course, back on the off-grid retreat. Well, if you wanna know more information about this specific product or any of the other Anchor products they offer, I'll put some links down below in the video description. All right, let's get back to work. All right, so we've got, uh, we, see me, me. Got all the siding in, going up to the uh, base of the rafters. So that should, of course, again, eliminate chicken poop. Now working on the roost bars and doing so in a, a lot of snow coming down. All right, so for the roost, I'm trying to figure out the angle right now that makes the most sense. And it's really not that big a deal. It's not like the chickens are gonna be sleeping on angle. It's just, you want the roost bars to be at an angle enough that, you know, King hen is not pooping on the hen below, so if they if they face, yeah, hopefully they face forward, not all of them do. So uh, yeah, you try to eliminate the person lowest on the rung getting um, four rungs where they poop. Anyway, but we also want to be uh, cognizant of our space. And what I want to be able to do, if you, you recall, are clean outdoors here down at the bottom. So I don't want to have to work around the roost. So if I've got a roost, the roost bars here, they're going to just be screwed to the frame at the top so I can lift it up and hook it on the rafter there to get it out of the way. And that'll be just high enough that I, as I'm sweeping underneath, I'll crack my forehead probably 16 times. That's just the way things go. But no, that'll lift it up and get it out of the way and allow us to sweep and clean underneath it there. So I think I've got my length right and I think I even got my angle. So I'm gonna cut, uh, cut the angles and the legs at the bottom so they uh, will fit flush on the floor. And then we'll start making the crossbars.
<coughs> dance, monkey dance. Very nice. Very nice. Get a kick out of here. So for the actual roost bars, roost poles, horizontals, whatever you want to call them, I've debated because over the last, you know, what, 12, 14 years of having chickens, I've kind of run the gamut. The one thing I've learned specifically is if you want to go with a round stock, like you go, oh, that's easier on the chicken's toes. They can wrap around a tree branch. That's more how they were made uh, to hang on to something like that. Don't go out in the woods, even this time of year, and cut a sapling down or cut a branch off a tree that's still green because what happens if um if you have bigger chickens like i do because my girls is thick i mean they they drop some weight now then uh, you'll come out in about a month and all your horizontals will be uh, smiley faces and so i learned that the hard way because i came out uh one time in the coop we had down in the, the main meadow there and all the chickens it's kind of like a cartoon they're all kind of in the middle because they they just kind of slide down to the curve because of the, the weight of it so if you're going to use a branch make sure one's been dead and it's the cellular structure is hardened so it's nice and rigid but i think what we're going to do is we're going to go with milled material now it'll be it'll be a little squared of course so it'll be a little harder on their toes but that's what i have in the coupe de ville and you'd be amazed how quickly their leathery feet wrapping around that wood will actually round that off and smooth it down so uh, especially popular i'm pretty confident it won't be that tough on them so I decided to, uh, since it's got a huge slab pile there by the mill, decided to uh, raid that. Found a board that was a little, a little chubby from the slab cut off. Still had some pretty good meat left on it. Put it on the mill and milled out one by twos. And uh, I was able to get four out of that slab. And I actually had some left, but four is all I needed. And it's over 10 feet long, even though we got a little bit of run out. But the plan will be to install those with the two inch running up. So that'll give even more uh, stability there when the chickens are on the, the roost bars, they're not gonna make it sag down. So that two inch will be kind of like, um, you know, like a floor joist. It'll be something to absorb the weight of the chicken. All right, so there we go. There's six rungs there. Um, that's about, if I recall, it's 30, just a little over three feet wide, 38 inches, I believe. So with 20 chickens or less is what we're planning to have in the church at any time. That would be, what, 3.3 chickens per rung there. So that third of a chicken can hang out close to the edge. Okay, so it's the next afternoon. Going to make our a little ramp and a little little porch, if you will, for the chickens to obviously get out of the pop door and climb down. Um, overnight, we got about uh, nine inches of snow, so everything is a beautiful winter wonderland right now. But the temperature's dropping like crazy. It's supposed to get down in the single digits Fahrenheit. So we'll try to get this done before we end up freezing our noses off. So let's, uh, we'll start there with the, uh, the ramp and see what we can do. All right, so I was down in the workshop and made this little front porch, if you will. So it's something I can just screw in there. The chickens can obviously walk out and have a platform. I was thinking about just doing a ramp ow, into my knee straight down, but obviously that's a pretty good drop. That's a little bit too much of a climb. So the point for doing the front porch is to have the ramp come over to the side. So that should be a little bit easier for them to to scale and we'll see how that goes but first we'll get this attached all right so uh little sun deck there for the chickens to hang out on <laughs> what's funny is i was in the shop just grabbing scrap wood had some old poplar had some cutoffs 
of oak. And I grabbed this board I thought it was just laying over in a corner, covered in dust. I thought, well, that's just a piece of poplar. So I grabbed it and started working on it. Time I knocked all the dust off, I realized it was a piece of black cherry that I had had in the corner, but it'll be the nicest chicken ramp in the, on the farm. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, after seeing that, that's still a pretty good incline. So we'll see how that goes. They may just have to jump up there. All right, so the next thing I want to do before we start moving chickens tonight, after it gets dark, is prep the floor. Right now, it's still just our poplar two by floor. And uh, two by floor, that's funny. <laughs> do you know how expensive two by floors are now? <laughs> So anyway, some of you guys had commented and recommended putting linoleum down. And I really like that idea. This time of year, as cold as it is, I really don't want to fool around with uh, linoleum right now because of you know, the cracking and all that kind of stuff. And wouldn't plan on gluing it down, but just roll it out. So right now, we're just going to use some sheet plastic. I have some extra from where I wrapped in the Coupe de Ville. And just going to put that down and then put a nice thick layer of wood chips on. And that should get them through for a couple months. You know, we'll add some more wood chips as we need to. But then uh, in the springtime, clean all that out, pull up all the plastic, and then probably put something down more permanent. But I gotta get all my stuff, all my scraps out of here, all my tools, and spread this plastic out. I think one more bale of wood chips probably would have been best, but a little light in the corners. But we can obviously add that next week. You may be wondering, why am I in such a rush to move the chickens all of a sudden now? Well, the next two weeks are just crazy. One week, I've got a lot of uh, marketing work to do, actually off-site stuff, so i got to get uh, that taken care of. But in betwixt all of that, we have to take our pigs to the processor. So it's time to move the pigs from uh, their last pasture over into the pasture where we can load them. Obviously get the trailer ready, get it loaded, pray that we don't have a foot of snow and uh, be prepared to take them. So that's going to tie up next week and the week after that is when I'll be uh, doing the marketing work. So trying to get all this done, get them moved. So uh, it's um, one less thing to worry about um, and not be bumped back to the end of January. All right, so really the next thing we need to do is I'm going to bring the poultry netting up and just put it around it. We're not going to uh, do any permanent fencing just yet. Probably wait till spring, figure out just exactly how this is going to work with all the chickens. And But right now we're just going to put some poultry netting around it, make it safe, make it secure. I've got an extension cord right up here already so we can uh, power that. And uh, And after dark, we're going to start moving chickens. All right, so I got the poultry netting moved. I didn't necessarily want to video that there's not too much exciting but uh you know the one good thing about this you know, this is the this is one of two strands of poultry netting that i have it's i think 100 all right had to switch cameras because the fancy gopro even though it's got a half battery can't handle the cold you know, so much for an action camera right? so anyway uh get an idea with this size fence just how much room i have or i'm going to need uh for the number of chickens now we're cutting that number of chickens in half but it, I was really surprised how far around it went. So we're way out around behind the chicken church, against the woods, all the way down to the cut at the Coupe de Ville, and back around and, and underneath uh, came on this side, the chicken church side of the big oak. But uh, it, it's really going to open it up quite a bit. <laughs> the camera hadn't moved. 
moved over yet. Oh gosh. Everybody good? Yep. <laughs> Look over here. It's like a clown car. <laughs> it's the Red Tool House clown car. All right, so Kelly and the boys helped me get all the chickens moved. And interestingly enough, I think we're making chickens because we moved 40 chickens, including the two roosters. So um, a little bit more than what I anticipated. But actually, everybody got on the roost. I estimated that roost could actually hold about 36 chickens. And it looks like everybody was getting in there. So it'll be a little tight, and we got to do some rearranging. We actually got to cull some hens from the uh, from the Coupe de Ville. There's some ones that are a little long in the beak. <clears throat> you may be wondering, uh, it is a little cold outside. We're getting down into the uh, single digits. And uh, people always ask why I wear a hat. In fact, somebody I saw, um, I guess I'd watched the channel for a long time, actually met in person, and they thought for sure I would be bald underneath my hat. And clearly I am not. <laughs> the reason why I wear a hat is to keep you guys from having to look at this all the time. <laughs> all right, we'll catch you in the morning. Okay, so next morning, it, uh, <laughs> it's a little later in the morning than I expected. I got up at daybreak this morning to go let the chickens out and give them a little food. And um, it was zero degrees. So I thought for the sake of the chickens, well, these, you should probably just stay in there for a couple more hours until it warms up. Doing that all, all for the chickens. So Now I'm going to go up there, going to give them a little food, let them out. And I don't think, as cold as it is, it's still only 16 degrees. As cold as it is, I don't know that they're going to necessarily come out and run around. But I want to get them out and I'm going to fall and bust my rear end here. I know it. So as I mentioned yesterday, one thing that's going to um, be a, a, a benefit right now, as they get used to this, is uh, being able to come out the front door. Since I've got the poultry netting all the way around the structure right now, that'll allow them to come out the front door because I think I'm going to have to revise that ramp. I think it's still just a little too steep. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. We've This is the first snow, real snow we've had in probably two years. And uh, it's hilarious. The, Mobile coop chickens, they're only in a tiny little spot where the snow is completely tramped down or gone. They're either staying inside or hanging out underneath. And the same here, they don't want to come out. They come to the edge and look and turn around and go back. So they're like, nope, we're good. So I took the time, got the feeder hung. I've got it hung on the outside of the building for now. Also got my light hung and we are, we gave them November, December off, both chickens, both flocks of chickens and use a light, comes on at four in the morning, shuts off eight or nine, something like that. Uh, so we're getting some egg production started back up there. And then I've got my electric fence poultry netting hooked up. Now again, this is a temporary configuration so I had to, <laughs> had to use my noodle here a little bit and try to figure out a way that I can do this to make it easier without going and buying a bunch of shutoffs and stuff like that. Because eventually we'll have this side of the chicken church and the front side of the chicken church outside of the poultry netting or electric fence. And then everything else will be inside. But right now it's all inside. So what I've done, I had a couple old battery jump starters that I cannibalized. So you can see that that jumper cable looking thing there that's just a lead going to the hot wire of the energizer and of course the ground post and all that type of stuff and here's where my poultry netting the two main spots converge you don't have to electrify it here but it just makes more sense when you use the the double tab here i lock those together and then uh, it makes make sure you're getting everything electrified so the plan is to you can see i've got a t-post or step, plastic step-in post here that when the fence isn't charged, it's just, that's the resting point. So I can disconnect, step over and get in the nesting box, walk around, get into the, uh, get into the church if I need to, to, to make some changes. 
and then come back and set back over. The, the key, of course, is being able to step over without electrifying yourself in the crotch. So that's that's my main game plan there. All right, so she is hot right now. So let's just test this and see if I get the crap knocked out of me. All right, so the game plan, I'm, so, I'm laying in the snow, so it's got melted snow all over it too. So we grab the hot lead here, we clip it on, and we want to hang it in a way that we can get it back without shocking. So she's definitely working. I hear her actually clicking down here where we're coming in contact with a little bit of snow, such as life right now. So I think that's going to work. So we're definitely going to make some adjustments as we go along and tweak this. I uh, really want to see how this is going to work out in the winter time and then lay out my permanent fence. That way it's not something I've done permanently and have to tear out again. So this is really going to allow us to experiment with this the next couple weeks, a <laughs> couple months actually. And then we can put something permanent in when spring comes and tie it all into the garden like we had planned on. Well, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Appreciate everybody watching. I pray you have a good week. Take care.